Hey y'all, top of the morning to ya. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I hope y'all are all doing well at home. Uh, I know we sure miss you guys. Sorry we can't be at school right now, uh, but we're gonna do art class anyway. All right, and I know y'all have missed my corny jokes. Um, so what kind of music do leprechauns like? Sham rock. Ah, get it? I know, I can hear you all groaning and, oh, Miss Doherty, that's cheesy. I know, I know, but you love it. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is Bridget Riley. We've talked about her before, um, and some fifth graders did a lesson on her not too long ago. Um, but Bridget Riley, she was popular around the 60s, like when we talked about Andy Warhol. She did some op art is kind of what she was best known for. Um, she was inspired by pointillism, like I've showed you some images like this one before in the past. She considered her art to be an optical science. She wanted to use her art to trick the brain and kind of make it see things that weren't really there. And from that, many other artists have taken this op art style and expanded it and really created some neat pieces that really play a trick on your brain. Sometimes they can make you a little bit dizzy as well. So you got to be careful about looking at them too much. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is a little op art activity, but tied into St. Patrick's Day. Um, just kind of easing us back into art class. All right, so what you're gonna need is a piece of white paper, and this is just computer printer paper, so if you have that, um, or you could use the back of a piece of paper, um, maybe like a document that nobody needs, don't take anything important and draw on it, um, and that could be your plain white paper. You're also gonna need a ruler, but if you don't have one, you could use anything with a straight edge, like maybe the edge of like a folder or I don't know, I've got like these little boxes, something with a straight edge. Um, and then for the detail work, um, you're gonna need a pencil. Uh, so hopefully everybody's got a pencil. Um, and then you can use Sharpie or just pencil if that's all you've got, you can make that work, uh, but you can use a Sharpie. Um, if you like the bold black and white look, you could use colored pencils, which that's what I'm going to be using. Um, or you could use color markers as well. Okay, so any of those supplies will work. All right, so like I said earlier, you need plain white paper. You need a ruler or something with a straight edge. Remember, you could use a folder, or maybe the edge of a box or a book. Um, and then I'm going to be using colored pencils. But if you want to use something like a Sharpie or you just want to use your pencil, that's fine too. You could also use markers for this as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is sketch out our clovers. All right, so when you're drawing a clover, think about a heart shape, but you're going to make it a little bit longer. So I'm sketching it out, curving it around like a heart. And then instead of bringing it to a point, I leave that open. And then I'm gonna add another one on the side. I'm doing three leaf clovers because I honestly like the way they look better. But if you wanna do a four leaf clover, you could do that as well. Okay, and then just the little stem is kind of like a triangle where you don't see the point. <laughs> All right, so now that you have your clover sketched out, we're gonna start adding a bunch of lines just in the background. So this can be, again, if you're just using your pencil or Sharpie or marker, colored pencil, whatever you're gonna use. We're gonna do stripes going horizontally. 
across the background. Um, I'll be doing a rainbow pattern just because it's St. Patty's Day and I like the way rainbow colors look. But again, if you want to keep it simple with just pencil, that's fine. So you can stick to a pattern. You could do like green, yellow, green, yellow or something. Um, or you can just do black and white. Either way is fine. So I'm going to take my straight edge. I'm using a ruler, but if you only have a folder, that's fine too. And I'm going to start drawing lines across my paper. And I'm going to keep them really close together. There's not a big white gap. Like that's even probably a little too far apart. So I'll just keep going with my colors until I get to my shape. All right, so now that I'm at my shape, I'm gonna keep doing my horizontal lines, but I'm gonna stop when I hit my shape. All right, so eventually I'll go all the way down the page with the horizontal lines. And now in here, instead of doing straight lines, we're gonna do curved lines. So it looks like our clover's coming off the page. All right, so once you've done all of your horizontal lines, you can start adding the curved lines into your clovers. So once they're curved, it should give the effect that they're kind of coming towards you and off the page a little bit for that op art, that optical illusion effect that we're going for. So in mine, I'm doing different shades of green. But again, if you're just using pencil, that's fine too. Just make sure these lines are going to curve up. Okay, and I'm leaving a little bit of a bigger gap because I'm going to later fill it in with my other shades of green. From here, we kind of get the idea that it looks like it's kind of coming off the page. But to help with that effect even more, if you take either a black colored pencil or your just regular pencil and add a little shadow to it, it really helps with the effect some more. So you have to kind of pick a side or two sides and stick with those. So I'm gonna pick the right and the bottom to do my shadow. So anytime something has a right side or a bottom, I'm gonna add the shadow. And to do that, it's darkest closest to my object. So this is the right side. And then I'm gonna fade it out, okay? And I'm doing the bottom, darkest right there under the bottom, and then it fades out. And then I'll kind of merge these two together there. Okay, so this is another <coughs> bottom side. This is another bottom side. So I'm gonna make that the darkest part and fade it out. And then I'll go not around the whole clover. Like I won't do a lot of this left side or any of the top parts. All right, so now we have our shamrock kind of looks like it's coming off the page a little bit. All right, so now I've got all my backgrounds done. I've got all the clover added. Um, and then I've got some shadow on these as well. This one's really dark and I did these a little bit lighter. Um, so I've kind of got a light shadow, medium shadow, and a dark shadow. So you can kind of decide which one, which style that you like best. It's really up to you, whichever one you want. Um, all right, so at this point you could leave it here. If you like the way it looks, great. If you want to make it look even more three-dimensional, what you can do is, um, so I'm gonna focus on this one and I'm gonna add some shadow to the actual clover. So I'm gonna do the same sides that I had my original shadow on, but I'm gonna put 
a little bit on the actual clover now. So as if it's actually three dimensional and has some shadow as well. All right guys, so I hope y'all enjoyed that op art activity. Remember you didn't have to use the same materials I did. You can modify this to whatever you have at home.